Welcome back. China's successful launch of the Tiangong-2 Space Laboratory represents the latest victory in China's space exploration. So what's next? Still with us, Yang Yuguang, professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. Li Roy Chiao is a retired NASA astronaut. Victoria Sampson is an expert in global space exploration. Louis Brennan is the author of The Business of Space. And let's start the segment with Louis. Uh, Louis, who are the main players in the space business right now? Of course, we know about the United States uh, program. That's the ISS, which is uh, circling the Earth. But who are the other big players? Uh, the, the other big players, uh, 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 along with uh, the uh, American um, um, activity in space with the ISS and so forth, is the European Space Agency, um, and then I would say followed by China, but you also have other players, um, for example, India, which um, on a very, very low-cost uh, um, basis has made significant strides uh, into space. Um, including um, sending a, a, a probe to, to Mars. Um, and it's done so because it, it has leveraged um, frugal innovation in terms of its uh, space development and its space technologies. But you have lesser players as well, such as uh, Brazil, for example, who've also been engaged um, in, in, in satellite development and so forth. But the, the key aspect then in terms of who are the players in space is that we've been seeing a very a significant development um, in space uh, over the past 10 years and more, and that is the entry into space of private sector uh, players and private sector actors. So that, for example, we see with SpaceX, we see with Blue Origin, uh, we see with... Um, um, other uh, players, such as Richard Branson's um, Virgin Galactica, uh, we see now um, a plethora of, of private sector players coming into the space uh, sector. So as we move forward, um, the expectation will be that um, you will see a, a, a less major role being played by national uh, players and a greater role being played by private sector players um, in space activity and in space exploration and in the exploitation of space for commercial purposes. Victoria, with all these myriad players getting involved in the space exploration business, both private and public, what is the potential for cooperation, for collaboration between countries and, for that matter, companies? Well, one of the interesting things by having all these new players is that all of them understand the rules of the road. How do you have a responsible space actor working in orbit so they don't affect other people's ability to utilize space. And so by bringing in everyone, the major stakeholders on these issues, you can have a good discussion about what are the norms of behavior, what's responsible space behavior, and try and get some cooperative efforts go along those ways. Um, in addition, it um, astonishes me, to be honest, that the United States and China do not cooperate in space. Um, the United States um, is actually... Is that because of that law that was passed which actually prevents Chinese astronauts from working on the ISS? It, there, the United, through congressional legislation, the White House and NASA are not allowed to do any kind of bilateral cooperation with China. Right. Now, that does not mean the United States doesn't work with China in terms of discussions via the State Department or the Department of Defense. Um, the United States sends China information on orbits, um, on objects in orbit. So we do some information like that. But it's part of a general problem. The United States doesn't know what to do about China. And, um, but we really need to figure out some way to work together because to the major space stakeholders, it's up to us to make sure that space is usable over the long term. And when we look at the programs that are financed by national governments compared to the ones that are financed by private companies, how do they compare? Well, I mean, the national governments definitely, they're bigger. Yeah. But the ones that are coming from the commercial space sector that were discussed earlier, they're faster, they're more technologically savvy, they're getting to do, put things up more quickly, and they're utilizing um, increasing numbers of technology. And so they're really more flexible and agile. So it's, um, it's an interesting situation where you have a big difference between the dinosaurs, so to speak, of space, and the new um, players. Difficult to talk about dinosaurs in space, <laughs> then. Yang Yuguang, China has very ambitious space goals. I mean, from this man flight, it's hoping to, as Leroy was telling us earlier on, support a space station in about five years. So what happens after this project? What are the sort of uh, benchmarks or milestones that we'll be looking for? 
Well, uh, the China's leaders have mentioned that China now is a big country in space field because we already have many launches just after the United States every year. Uh, in the future, we hope that we can come become an uh, advanced country in space field. Uh, to achieve this goal, we not only need to establish a, a space station, in low Earth orbit. Uh, we just recognize it as a, a national level laboratory in space and perform the scientific research which can uh, lead the technologies, promote the technologies, uh, and benefit the national economy and also uh, that of the human being. In the future, uh, China is also planned to have more activities in space, for instance, such as the robotic missions to Mars and also to uh, Jupiter and other celestial bodies of the solar system. Uh, this field, I believe, that is a good chance for all countries, uh, including the United States, cooperate, uh, cooperate together with China. Uh, meanwhile, China also performed many uh, 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 scientific research schemes. Uh, in recent years, China has launched many scientific research satellites, such as the uh, dark, uh, dark matter particle exploration uh, satellite, the MOS quantum science uh, uh, satellite. And also, in the future, we will also have more uh, scientific research satellites. And also, we have the high definition Earth observation uh, schemes, which provide uh, many good uh, images, uh, either the real images or the optical images to uh, benefit the uh, c uh, c uh, civilians. So in the future, China will do uh, all kinds of things in the space field to uh, not only promote its technologies, but also to uh, have more applications in this field to benefit uh, common people and also the, the, uh, the, the country's e economy. Leroy, when we talk about uh, cooperation, collaboration in space exploration, uh, we hear this term, space diplomacy. Uh, for instance, on the ISS, I mean, there have been people from, I'm not sure how many countries, but several nationalities who've been on the uh, space station, who've worked on the space station. How important is that? Oh, I think it's very important. If you take a step back and look at the big picture, uh, you know, the first and foremost reason a country gets into the human spaceflight business is for national prestige and for projecting soft power. And so when you have an organization or a, a project like the International Space Station where you were, have former Cold War enemies, former World War II enemies come together and create this incredible, uh, very visible civil project, uh, everyone is aligned, at least in that one thing. And so it's in everyone's interest that the projects succeed. Uh, people talk about, about Russia and why are we working with the Russians. Uh, you know, relations now aren't great between the United States and Russia, but I would say they would be much worse if we weren't working together on this one very visible project, at least in this project. And for that reason alone, I think it makes a lot of sense to bring China in. We've been talking about cooperation. I've been quietly trying to advocate for that for the last 10 or so years. And it just amazes me that uh, you know, there's certain members of the U.S. Congress that are so short-sighted, uh, they don't see that we're actually doing ourselves. The United States is doing itself a disservice by not working with China. You know, all the uh, the other space agencies, including, of course, Russia, which uh, which should have been mentioned a little earlier, uh, you know, they are all moving forward, and they are talking about going to the moons. The Europeans have been talking to Russia about sending astronauts to the moon now for a few right. years. China very recently uh, publicly declared that they intend to land astronauts on the moon. And so we, the United States, would be natural leaders of that international program. Yeah. And so I think uh, we're, we're going to miss the boat if we don't do that. Okay, Lewis, very quickly, I've got about a minute left. Your book, of course, is called The Business of Space. You've written the book. How much room is there for the commercialization um, and private enterprise in space? I think there's um, a, a, a great deal of opportunity. I mean, it's been mentioned that when, when we think of space uh, from the point of view of national players, um, prestige is, is one element. A second element then is scientific uh, experimentation. A third element, of course, is the military one that you mentioned. But increasingly, I think we're going to see that uh, commercial opportunities. And the commercial opportunities stem for a number of reasons. First of all, there's the technologies that are dr driven uh, by the needs of space exploration and the needs of, of the humanization of space. And these technologies are likely, as they develop, to spawn uh, new industries that we don't even imagine at the moment. There's opportunities in terms of space travel, space tourism, um, mining of materials and so on. There's opportunities in terms of energy. So the list is really endless. Um, the opportunities are there. I think that um, uh, private sector right. players are increasingly sensing that. And I anticipate that, you know, we're going to see 
whole new industries blossom out of space okay. that uh, at the moment we can't even imagine. Okay, and we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for joining us. That's all we have time for. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.